In this video I'm going to show you a procedure that you can use to turn this scrap electrical wiring into a very attractive copper chain. The first application for this technique that probably springs to mind is for jewelry. And it does work quite nicely for that. But I've found this stuff to be pretty useful for all sorts of things. It will work anywhere you would need a light duty rust proof chain and once it's in your inventory you'll find uses for it everywhere. I have to admit that I find it strangely satisfying. I can't quite explain why. It just has a very fluid, almost mercury-like quality to it that makes it pleasant to handle. But this is a process that I've developed over quite a number of years and I've simplified it to the best of my ability and I really hope you give it a try. I'm starting out by cutting some stock that's around one inch by five eighths of an inch but the size isn't critical. Now I want to set my blade height to just over an eighth of an inch and you can use a drill bit as a gauge to accomplish this. Now my goal is to create a perfectly centered channel that's an eighth of an inch deep. I don't expect to get it perfect on the first pass, so I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to flip the stock around and come at it from the other side. And that will ensure that it's perfectly centered. This is a good time to find a piece of hardwood stock. I'm using oak flooring here and run a nice eighth inch slot down the top edge of it. And this will be a very useful tool that I will show you how to use later. One mated pair of these will form the body for my jig, but before I proceed, I'm going to have to cut a strip of plywood. And I want this plywood to be about half of the height of my stock. This will ensure that each half doesn't lose its counterpart. And to determine my length, I'm using a hacksaw blade for a spacer. The purpose of this saw cut is simply to help guide our drill bit down the channel to ensure that we get a straight hole. Off camera I cut a new set of blocks where the saw cut is only a sixteenth of an inch deep and th this has given me a one eighth by one eighth square in between the two. The reason that I didn't edit it out is because it worked so well for clarity. These plywood blocks should only be glued to one half of the jig. You can hold it together with a little nail if you want. In case you were wondering, I'm using 12 gauge electrical wiring, but just so you and I can get on the same page, that's about 0 0.08 of an inch. I cut my strips to around 28 inches. 
This will get you approximately 25 lengths or about 6 inches of chain. This is a piece of 1 quarter inch steel. It's very easy to find and very inexpensive. And of course you can use any size that you choose, but this size will produce an end result that is a link that's about one centimeter in diameter. At this point you have to make a decision to proceed by going this way or this way. There is no right answer, but it will make a difference to your jig. So consider for a second that there are two ways that you can go about making a helix. You have to choose one and stick with it, and that way your jig will fit the shape that you choose like a glove. Your helix really shouldn't be any longer than around 5 or 6 centimeters because any longer and it will become springy while you're wrapping it. It will also be more difficult to cut. When loading the cutting jig, the helix should press up against the far side wall. This keeps the links from jamming during the cut. Think about the teeth on a hacksaw blade. They cut on the push stroke, so it pushes the links forward. Watch how the plywood blocks protect the bottom half of the links. Now let me show you one of the great things about making chain this way. You don't have to modify the links at all, and they go together by pressing the two cuts together like that. And now it won't fall off unless you make the two cuts line up again. This makes the assembly process very easy. Now take a close look at this tool because it will be your friend during this process. This is a regular pair of needle nose pliers, and what I've done is used epoxy to affix two pieces of rawhide leather to the tips. The leather keeps the copper from being scratched while you work it, and if you look really closely you can see that use has worn a nice little groove in to the leather that keeps the link from slipping as you work it. Now it's just a simple matter of hooking them together and then closing the links. When you do this, you want to press them together and wiggle back and forth until they gently nest. A well-made chain should have gaps in it that are so small that you can't even fit a thread through them. So it won't even snag a sweater if it's done properly. Over time, copper naturally will oxidize. And you may prefer this patina look, but if you don't, it's a very simple procedure to restore it to a high luster shine using only salt and vinegar. After you remove it from the solution, just rinse it off with some dish soap and water, and that's all it takes. So just how strong is this chain? Well, it should go without saying that this is a light duty chain. Nevertheless, we should still be aware of its limits. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time.